Good morning. Very rainy day today. No motorcycle riding today, but I do have some maintenance shit I need to do, and that's after I get all my training in pretty much, right? I guess I could actually wait to work out later tonight. My weight, free weight workout. Anyway, you know, I'm out there on this treadmill. Today I did 43, 44 minutes. And 40 minutes of that was, was um, productive. 40 minutes of that was solid, effective cardio. And I'm going to tell you, if you focus on the difficulty or the strenuousness that's involved to get this fucking thing accomplished, to reach your target, you're going to feel every minute. But if you distract your brain, um, you can put out the same amount of effort for the entirety of the duration. And as long as you don't look down and look at that timer, as long as you don't, you keep your head out of that. The body, your body knows what it's doing. It can, it can, it can do that. You can multitask. Get some music going in your ear holes there. Something that isn't going to let you just relax and let something that's going to drive you and kick you in the ass. For me, that could be a lot of stuff, but I, I like Black Label Society. A lot of that is a sure thing, you know, out of that catalog. It's a surefire thing that there's plenty of stuff in there, plenty of um, compositions, songs that are going to do it, that, are, that will kick me in the ass and will give me that fucking drive and whatever it takes for you man listen you got all this technology now watch an episode of vikings or something you know stick your little ipad or whatever the fuck it is you got i don't have one by the way but i do have a smartphone now stick your little ipad or whatever it is up on a treadmill watch an episode of vikings or something watch something you know let that fucking animal out of the cage a little bit you know, everybody's got one every man's got one comes with testosterone. It comes free. You get that when you get with your testosterone there. You know, I'm talking about your natural production, everything, the reason that you are a man, right? It's in there. It's in you. It's innate. But what I'm saying in this video is, hey, old man, you know, get up off your ass. Get in the fight. It's not over. Look at fucking society today. I was talking to a good brother of mine yesterday. And he, you know, I'm fucking hyped up. I'm trying to share with him because I'm trying to motivate him. Because as far as I'm concerned, he's in a fight for his life at this point. He went through some rough fucking times, a whole bunch of them. And he's a survivor and he continued to, you know, hammer on. And he made it through all of that shit. Took a toll on him. Took a toll on him, you know. Um... He had to diffuse his energies into other areas and, and take look out for other people and put what he needed to the side. And, you know, end result, now it's time to do some catch-up on the maintenance. Why? Because we're at that age now. We're at that age. Okay? When you hit any particular age, it doesn't mean that, oh, I got to stop now, it's too late. Or, oh, I'm too old to do that now. Oh, I can't do that anymore. If that's what you want to say, then go ahead. But, you know, maybe you should reach down and see if you still got some balls and give them a good hard squeeze, you know, and, and, and tell yourself, wake up, motherfucker. You're in it for the long haul, you lazy fuck. You're in it for the long haul. People still are going to need you. You're going to need that body. You only get the one. And... You know, a lot of this medical community shit, they'll tell you, oh, you can't fix that. You know what? I'm going to share something with you right now. You know, they tell me, all right, I had surgery on this knee, I don't know, two years ago, a year and a half ago, two years, whatever the hell it was, coming up on two years. The surgeon is a sports medicine specialist, does all kind of athletes, knees, all this shit, right? Well-known guy. Does my knee. In recovery room, you know, I come to, I'm sitting in there, laying in there. He comes in to talk to me, and he's all smiles, and he's all happy. Everything went great, and he tells me, he says, how you feeling, James? I said, I feel okay, I feel okay. He goes, uh, he says, you know, I was in there, that knee of yours, man. I thought I was operating on a 30-year-old, right? So then later, fast forward year, 
I'm having some issues with my knee a little bit. Not a lot initially, right? So I go in and talk to him about that. Why? Because I developed a Baker cyst in the back of my knee. And that's related to the injury. It's not unusual. So I go in to talk to him about it, and he's like, well, you know, you know, uh, they, 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 they compress it and all that shit. It goes down. Everything's fine. But at the same time, he's like, well, you're still going to have some issues with the knee. I mean, look at your age. Right away, they fucking default to that age thing. That's like a, in my opinion, that's just, just like an excuse for them just to, to write something off. So, well, I don't need to deal with this fucking shit. This motherfucker is how old? You know, what's he going to be doing? He don't need to do all that. You know what I mean? That knee's fine. Or, you know, that part is fine for him. He's okay. He's good enough. <laughs> right? If you were talking to a 30-year-old guy, like he told me my knee looked like it was, he's going to have different expectations for that guy. He's going to say, well, man, you got your whole life ahead of you yet. Let's do something. Right? But he could discount me or any of us because of our age. That's what they do. That's what the medical community does. That's what everybody tries to do. You know, that's their inclination. That's in their paradigm, what they think old is. So I said, to, he said, well, you know, you're getting older. You've got a little bit of arthritis in that knee. I said to him, hey, aren't you the same guy that came in the recovery room and told me all giddy and shit and said, I thought I was operating on a 30-year-old's knee. That's how good it looked in there. He goes, well, I'm not sure if I put it that way. I said, I'm sure you put it that way. So were you bullshitting me then or are you bullshitting me now? You know, but here I am today, knee's great now. I got what I needed, I'm good to go. But what I'm telling you is, okay, I do have some arthritis. I don't suffer anything with it. This fucking hand was the worst. This hand, from not using it, I'm using, I'm lifting weights, I'm doing this, I'm not fighting. And it doesn't have to be fighting for God's sake, it could be whatever, but I'm not doing anything where I really have to squeeze hard and close this fucking complete fist up like this and squeeze with this left hand. You know, you think you're doing shit, you're turning wrenches, you're lifting weights, right? You're not really, you know, you got to find what really taxes that motherfucker, you know, to attack what your problem is. Let me tell you some fucking truth. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, this hand hurt so bad that I had to lay it against things flat and force it, hold it all the way open because that ease the pain some, stretching it out. Now that I've started working on this bag, when I first started, okay, right hand's good as ever. This left hand, I couldn't make a really good tight fist. It was very painful. It would even swell up. Now, it's only been a couple weeks, right? Look at this fucking thing. I couldn't do that a few weeks ago. I couldn't do that. I can crack a fucking walnut almost in that hand again now. Yeah. So what happened to that arthritis? Huh? What happened to that arthritis? If I believed everything that I was told, I would have just said, oh, well, that's how it goes. And then you know what would have happened? I wouldn't have done shit. And then another three, four years from now, God willing, I'm still here. If I'm supposed to be, I'll be here. Fucking hand would have been all twisted up and shit, right? Probably. So I figured the hand's going to do what I wanted to do because this three-pound fucking brain makes the decisions. This three-pound brain is in control. That hand doesn't fucking tell me what it's going to do and not going to do. I tell that hand what I want it to do. And then if it, if it says, hey, I got issues here, then I got to come up with a plan and a program, a tactic, a strategy to be able to rehab this motherfucker. And the rehab has to be in line with what you want it to do, what your expectations are. And it could be for anything, anything, you know? So when I started hitting that bag, you know, a heavy bag, and I'm still, I'm not like buckling the bag yet, but I'm fucking close. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't just jump in there, both barrels, you know, wide open the first day. But I'm getting close to really being able to cut loose hard. And pounding on that fucking bag, having to make this fucking fist tight and solid, it fixed it. Did it fix it? I'm sure there'd be a doctor out there somewhere saying, well, really, you didn't fix it. You're probably doing more damage to it. Well, it doesn't feel like it. And, it, it, and it, I'm 100% happier with the ability for me to get the use out of it with how it's functioning right now than I was a few weeks ago. So am I hurting it more? 
And, and where's the downside to even trying? Where's the downside? You afraid you're going to make it worse? If it doesn't do what you need it to do, you got two choices. Concede. sub fucking mitt Or go ahead and try something. You make it worse. It, it wasn't doing what you wanted it to do anyway, if you really wanted it to do it. So what the fuck you mean? Make it worse. But it made it better. It made it better. Yeah. So, like, I was talking to my, my buddy, and he said, hey, you're in, like, the best shape of anybody that I know. You always have been. And I said, I don't want to be in great shape for a 60-year-old guy. I want to be in the best shape that I can be, period. You know why? Because society is on a teeter-totter, and it's going to fall one way or the other, and we don't really know where it's going. And just if, let's say if, if people are standing in line, paying ten dollars for a loaf of fucking bread, and God knows how much for a gallon of gas, so much for a gallon of gas that people can't afford, and they have to have maybe security just to keep people from trying to steal a fucking gas. Who knows? You think that hasn't happened? Have you seen any place in the world throughout your lifetime? It can happen. Will it happen here? I would never thought so. And God willing, it will will not happen here. And I'm just fucking. You know, just saying a huge what if that is extremely unlikely, but what if it does happen? All right, I don't, I don't expect there are going to be a bunch of 60-year-old guys out there trying to come through my front door to take what I got. I don't expect that there are going to be 60-year-old men out there, you know, trying to take my vehicle, trying to steal my gasoline, trying to whatever the fuck, you know, mess with any of mine, loved ones, any other thing. I expect they're going to be young, virile, healthy motherfuckers that are going to be out there. Uh, so being in good shape for a 60-year-old, what the fuck does that stack up to in the face of a situation like that? You know, now you can say, oh, that's ridiculous. He's fucking crazy. It's just a what if. It's just a what if. You know... Maybe instead of sitting around watching these action movies and losing yourself in fucking fantasy land for a short period of time, an hour or two, and envisioning, you know, what it must be like in your heart's pounding, watching these fucking men do these amazing things, remarkable feats. Maybe for a minute, go out and do something yourself. Be a, a fraction of that man you find so entertaining on that screen in that fairy tale role. Because what's the difference between you and him? When you get down to the core of it, he's a man, you're a man. If it's that fucking far out beyond disbelief, it's fucking fairy tale land. Well, that don't really entertain me a whole lot. But I've never been much of a spectator. Life is not a fucking spectator sport. So what I'm saying is, you're getting older now. Even if you never did any of this shit when you were younger, now, if you don't do it, if you don't change your ways, you can put yourself through a lot of shit when you're younger you can't do today. I put shit in my body when I was younger, you know, that was commensurate, commensurate with my fucking age and physicality and, and that my body was still repairing itself faster than it was degrading. But now, I realize that, you know, I'm degrading faster than I'm able to repair. Or so they say. So you would think. You know, usually a word to the wise is sufficient. Just saying, see what you can do. Challenge yourself, man. Improve your fucking self. Do it now. Do it now. You got people you care about? Mm Mm-hmm. Do it now. Can you leave the care and protection of those you, you love the most, can you leave that to somebody else? Hopefully nothing bad will ever happen. Hopefully it's completely unnecessary. Worst case scenario, you just got in good shape and you're able to play with your kids or your grandkids or go out and enjoy the world a little bit more. You know, because of the enhanced physicality. What's the worst thing happen? It'll kill you? You're going to die anyway, just like me. And we're a fucking lot closer to it than we used to be. Take care. 
get fucking, get your shit together and get fucking moving. Challenge yourself, man. Old man, get up. Get up, shake thy dust from thy bones. Have a great day.